The Taliban have a promised uh, rights for women and the independent media and peace for Afghanistan. And the group's uh, spokesperson made the remarks at a rare media briefing, the first since taking control of the country. CGTN's Timothy Warwick reports. He's one of two spokesmen for the Taliban, a shadowy figure. Until Tuesday, we didn't know what he looked like. Zabahullah Majahid has become the face of the group's pledge to Afghanistan and the world. We are bound by the rights of women that have been given by Sharia. Our sisters and mothers will be given all the rights that God has given them. Women are a part of society. Women will work in various fields of the country while living under Sharia. Women will work in education, health and other fields and will play an active role. That's a major departure from the last time the Taliban took power in 1996. We want a future government and system that includes people of all schools of thought. We don't want more war. We want peace in Afghanistan. Taliban is also saying there will be no retribution against past enemies. I must remind you that we forgive everyone because it is in the interest of peace and stability in Afghanistan. All the groups that were confronting us are all forgiven. The Taliban also declared a blanket amnesty for Afghan nationals and called for women to join the government. For some who lived under the Taliban, these promises are just that. In my experience, I her belief uh, to the Taliban. Uh, you know, they have words that they are very uh, nice because they are in the new start. Uh, if they are very good, if they are very sweet people, why the people in Afghanistan want to leave? We experience the Taliban. We know the Taliban. I think the proof is in the pudding. It's not the reality. We will see what will they do in the future. I cannot believe them. People in Afghanistan never believe them. Afghan women are especially concerned about what rights the Taliban will afford them. As an Afghan woman, they don't, I wouldn't trust them because they don't have a very clear track record of being keeping up their promises or something like that. If they were so keen on women's rights, they wouldn't stop Hirat girls from going to university. They wouldn't stop women working in uh, Azizi Bank in Kanda. There is progress being made on the surface, such as this Taliban official taking an interview with a female Afghan journalist. That previously would have been forbidden. Many governments and organizations like the UN are taking a more wait-and-see approach. We will need to see what actually happens, and I, I think we will need to see uh, acts uh, on the ground in terms of, of promises uh, kept. The Taliban will have the coming days and weeks to show if they're true to their word and what their promises mean for the world and Afghans. Timothy Ulrich, CGTN. Well, for more, let's go live to our correspondent Zamarali Abbasin in Kabul. Zamarali, nice to see you again. So what's the situation in Kabul right now? The city has experienced a quite dramatic few days. And uh, some reports are saying the Taliban are now searching the home of uh, interpreters who worked for foreign forces. Would you please tell us more about that? Hello there and good morning. The situation in Kabul is calm. There is no incident that is reported and Taliban are doing uh, their uh, security uh, 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 efforts uh, to secure the city and the people. It's so news. It, it's uh, it's uh, just three days and the people are just getting out slowly to the roads. Uh, some shops are getting open, the biggest malls and the biggest exchange uh, market uh, and banks are still closed and people are not assured fully as Taliban takes steps uh, to the uh, conferences and they make sure to tell the people that they don't have to worry about anything. They want to make peace with everybody, though they have no enmity with anyone in Afghanistan and they call upon everybody to take part in uh, rebuilding their country and stuff. But there, there, the reports and rumors that emerge about house to house searching is something that is denied by the Taliban where I live, from where I report to you, I have got no such thing particularly anywhere. Yes, there are P Taliban in street, but 
they have, uh, as, I, as I know, uh, not entered to the civilians' houses is, they call it, house-on-house -house search. Uh, all right, so um, many Afghans, uh, as far as we know, have uh, fled the country. Uh, tell us more about the refugee situation there. According to the U.S. State Department, they stated that the U.S. has resumed departing uh, Afghan refugees, those who are uh, t taking refuge and immigration uh, in the United States, but their fate is unclear at, at this moment. In the uh, Kabul airport, I, our Hamid Karzai International Airport is reopened, and according to the U.S. authorities, they will continue. They also added that 700 people are already evacuated, including 150 U.S. citizens. So the process is still going on. People are getting calmer in the city. But uh, whether if uh, there was any Taliban in the city or not, even it was in 2005, 10, 15, or even uh, all along those uh, 20 years, many people believe Afghan would do the same thing that they have been doing right now and they had never been satisfied, secure and uh, that feeling of comfort in their own country. That's why there is a huge emergence of the refugees, uh, uh, flees, uh, those people who seek flee from Afghanistan and Kabul airport now. Right, and some people are still fighting against Taliban, although uh, uh, Taliban has uh, taken over most parts of the country. For instance, Vice President uh, Amrullah Saleh says he's in Afghanistan and he's the legitimate caretaker president based on the constitution since President uh, Ghani has left. And some reports say his forces have already retaken a provincial capital from the Taliban. So what's going on there about that? Uh, first, I, I have uh, never uh, re uh, received any report about recapture of any province by the uh, anti-Taliban sides like uh, the team or the uh, regrouping of Amrullah Saleh with allies, son of Ahmad Shah Massoud, Ahmad Massoud. There is no report at the moment uh, and uh, the war, there is no war, no clash report about, uh, about Afghanistan scenario at the moment and the Taliban are trying to make a uh, good relation with the people. They, they are trying to uh, deliver the messages to the region and the world that they want peace and these things. But uh, uh, yes, this is a fear whatever uh, former uh, first deputy of the president uh, has announced. Uh, th that's uh, a concern for the people because if there is any element, any opposition in the country, the war, war will never end and that was what happened with the Taliban in 2001. Most of the parties believe that there would be no war because Taliban is finished, but we saw what happened and that's why uh, they are ruling now. Uh, because of the situation, the history and a lot of other things that belong to Afghanistan, no group should be underestimated and they are still concerned about those issues because some countries are involved deeply in Afghanistan issues as the so-called proxy war and interference from the region and uh, uh, international uh, countries or the Western countries are also a fear and a problem for the Afghan people. But most of the youth in Kabul that I've been talking with, they believe that this war should be end in a fair way through the dialogue. If there is Amrullah, if there is Ahmad Masood or anybody else, they should uh, be uh, Sit, they should sit uh, behind the negotiation table and they should solve the problem via negotiation. And it's possible because the Taliban are signaling everybody in the country to come back and take part in rebuilding their own country. So we have to wait uh, for the consequences. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Zamrali Abbasin reporting from Kabul. Well, some people in Kabul say they hope that the new government can bring peace and stability to the country. The prices of goods are high. One bag of flour is 1,900 or 2,000 Afghani. Ten liters of oil cost 1,350 or 1,400, and seven kilograms of rice cost 350 Afghani. The prices are high. God bring affordability and composure. I wish there will be peace that my kids can study and build a country.
Right now, there is no problem. Work and business are ongoing. Security is good. I'd like to request that they do more to make sure people are comfortable. My wish is, and I request the leaders to put down their guns, be present for peace. I hope peace will come, and people could live in peace in Afghanistan. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says the nation is in no hurry to recognize the Taliban as the new government in Afghanistan. Russia is calling for building an inclusive government involving all Afghan ethnic groups. Stuart Smith has more from Moscow. Right now, diplomats are continuing as normal. Some have requested to leave on their own initiative, but other than that, the Russian embassy in Kabul is working uh, as if there has been no change of power. Russia in particular proud that it says it's working with all the players uh, in this conflict. The special representative on Afghanistan for the Russian president saying we are not going to evacuate. Russian diplomats have created comfortable conditions for themselves. Russia is not choosing whether yet to recognize the Taliban as the new government or not. It says it's waiting for a UN Security Council decision on that one. Uh, but it is interesting to hear from that special ambassador. He's saying that he's satisfied that so far Taliban and authority, uh, authorities in Kabul are behaving decently and that Russia will judge the Taliban not by their words but by their deeds. Uh, and if the Taliban respect the freedoms and human rights of those in Afghanistan, then let it be this way. Stuart Smith, CGTN, Moscow.